I started this DAC project in 2017. I want to share my experience with you, especially if you are planning to build a DAC yourself and you will find this helpful. I am pretty sure you will have a lot of questions and you will face the same problems as I did. Okay, let's get started. I am using this software called SketchUp Personal Edition. It is absolutely free. It was owned by Google many years ago. This is not a DAC designed software, so it will not help you to calculate the materials. Instead, it is a 3D modeling software. In my opinion, that's exactly what I needed. Yes, there is a huge learning curve, but it does help a lot to visualize your project. After you created your design, you should have some technical questions. The first one is how far the footing should be spaced. The generic answer is 8 feet. In my case, I have 22 posts. Something to keep in mind when you are doing the planning. You want to visit your local hardware store to see if they actually carry the lumber you are planning to use. Not all the stores carry 2x10 in 20 feet, for example. Now, let's talk about design. There are many resources on the internet, but I want to tell you one design trick. You always want to create a focal point, otherwise your deck will be very boring. In my case, I built a burglar and a bridge. One important key is that the focal point needs to be seen from inside of the house, usually the kitchen. You also want to define the space that serves different purpose. In my case, I have a sitting area under the pergola in front of me. A fire pit and a couch would be perfect. On the other side, I have a dining area. Because it is too open, adding a privacy screen would give me the right balance. To make the contrast even stronger, I was planning to use composite or PVC from day one because I can use two-tone color. I learned all this from HGTV host Paul LaFrance. He is the master of deck creation. He inspired me on this project and I actually went to meet him personally and got his autograph. Enough talking, we are ready to do some work. I got several bottles of mocking paint and started to draw on the grass. This is my way to mock the post. First, Put the stick into the soil and mark the cross using a piece of cardboard or some throwaway packaging like what I did. Then you cut a circle from another cardboard, punch a hole in the middle and slide it down to the ground. Simple as that. For 22 holes, of course, I would choose the helical screw pile system. The most famous company in Canada of course is Techno Metal Post, but they did not respond fast enough to get my business. Techno Metal Post is more expensive because they spent so much money on advertising. So I went with another company called Goliath Tech. I am a technical person and I compared the technical details between the two. I found that Goliath Tech is a better choice. I will cover this later and explain why. There are a couple of points you need to consider. Make sure that the steel piles are up to cold. Better not made in China and they are galvanized steels. If you live in a newer subdivision like mine, you need to ask if their machine is able to get to your backyard. there are different sizes of pile to choose from. 178 is being the smallest, and the next one up is 2 and 3 8. I used 2 and 3 8 for all my piles. For DIY people, I recommend paying a bit more to get the adjustable saddle. For Goliath Tech, they have an anchoring system to prevent vertical uplift in case of tornado. 
where techno metal post does not have such thing. If you have good eyes, you will see the logo, your DAC company on the guy's t-shirt and also on the boxer machine. The owner of this DAC building company bought the franchise from Goliath Tech. In other words, this guy's a professional DAC builder. There was one big problem I did not expect. I asked for 22 piles, but only 20 were installed because two of them hit the rock deep down at around 4 feet. They did not have an excavator and it was not their job, to be fair. There was no plan B at that time and I could not change my design right at that spot. So, I told them I would figure it out myself. Don't repeat my mistake. You need to have a plan B in case this happens to you. Unlike using sonotube and concrete, you can control the position of the saddle before they dried. It seems like it is very hard to get the post perfectly aligned. They do have a solution for this adjustable saddle. It is called offset bracket. Look, the screw thread is not on the center. The guide told me you have to be very creative when it comes to framing. Okay. As you see, they have two screws to prevent uplift. Now, there is one screw that is for making this head unit more stable. For the adjustable saddle, the whole length of the screw is 7 inches. I was told by the guy that you have to put at least 1 inch into the head unit. So, it gives you 6 inches of adjustable height. That's more than techno metal post. They put all the technical details on paper, including the torque, load capacities, and how far they drilled. As you can see, they drilled more than 4 feet, most of them at least 5 to 5.5 five feet into the ground. The piles are not going anywhere for sure. There was no mess and installation was fast, it took around uh, half a day. I think many of you may want to ask, what is the damage? Is 5,500 Canadian, tax included. That's for 20 piles, not 22 I originally planned. Will I use it again? The answer is definitely yes. Okay, the next challenge is to install two more posts that they couldn't do it. How did I solve that issue? Yes, concrete. But there were so many unexpected problems. Stay tuned for the next video. Remember to subscribe. If you find this helpful, please give it a thumbs up. 
If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section and I will try to answer them. Thanks for watching and see you next time.